So let's welcome them all up. Give them a friendly Come welcome this morning. Come and join me, everyone. Michael. Awesome. Make them feel welcome. Give them a round of applause. Woo! We love a panel here. It's good to get with people and discuss. To oh, nearly dropped everything. It's all good. Thank you, Dom. Before I make a dog's breakfast out of it. Thank you. All right. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining you. me. So this morning, we're just going to talk about the power of human connection. And I've got these guys here to share as well. And we're just going to look into how your church can be your human connection and how you can get great power, resources and support from your connect group. So today, like we said, we've got George, Kim and Michael. So I thought before we started asking them some questions, I wanted to ask us a rhetorical question, which means I don't want an answer. So don't shout out any answers, yeah? Why is human connection so important? Why is it so important? So if you know myself, I went into a deep dive on the internet and I started doing um, a lot of research and this is what the experts tell us, yeah? Human connection is a deep bond that's formed between people when they feel seen and valued. Human connection makes you feel heard and understood and gives you a sense of belonging. According to the psychologist Abraham Maslow, famous for Maslow's hierarchy of needs, human beings are social species wired to connect. According to this gentleman, besides food, water and safety, love and belonging are the most important needs we must fulfil. That's very interesting to note there. This includes our desire for interpersonal relationships, intimacy to connect with others and to be integrated into a group. When these needs are met, our overall well-being improves and we live a more fulfilled life. So these are researchers, these are doctors that are telling us and giving us this information. This bit that I came across I thought was really funny. The 2021 World Happiness Report. Did anyone know that every year we make a World Happiness Report? What happened in 2021? Hmm. The, this report found that people who experienced an increase in connectedness with others during the pandemic had a greater life satisfaction, more resilience and better mental health. And we all know what it was like for two years to be in solitude, in the confines of our own home, not having a lot of human connection. Having a strong support system helps people overcome challenges more easily and maintain a state of mental well-being. Human connection also decreases health risks and improves physical well-being and longevity. Who wants to live a beautiful, happy, fulfilled, long life? I don't know about you, but I do. Songs, strong social connections strengthen the immune system and increases your chances of a life by 50%. Wow. Many years ago, I went to a conference in New Zealand and there was a psychologist there and she made a statement that I think has stayed with me and she said that science and research are only just catching up with the Bible and God's teachings. Now, everything I just read there is, is familiar because it's in the Word of God. It, it was actually God. Some of the very first words that he spoke were, it is not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper. See, we weren't meant to do life sol in solitude by ourselves. We were meant to do life in partnership, in community. And lastly, to note that research tells us that human connection needs to be nurtured. It needs to be nurtured. You can't just do it. Imagine if my husband and I only saw each other once on our wedding day and never saw each other again. I wouldn't have a marriage, would I? It would be a terrible. Forget that. Not going to happen. <laughs> Regular contact deepens your connection with others and ensures you don't lose touch with those you most value. Amen? So I'm going to 
look over to my first beautiful couple here this morning, and either of you can answer. Um, and with the first question, I want to ask you guys, which is not about Connect Group, but I thought it was very important, what was your first impression of church when you walked through our doors? What was your first impression? Leon? The th- yeah, that's it. The first impression I got was uh, welcoming. We, awesome. It felt like we had known people for years awesome. and it was just family that we or relations we had never met. Um, they just hugged us, talked to us. That's amazing. Yeah, it just made us feel so welcome. That's beautiful, beautiful. Can George. I add to that? Yes, please. Kimmy is 100% right. <laughs> the thing, that, see, I'm a, I, I classify myself as a newbie. I only came along to church because Kimmy and Ben uh, were following Christ and I was reluctant. Yeah. Um, but I, when I walked in through those doors, I've said to Pastor Dom and Kula that you guys get it right. You guys should get a <laughs> high five to, to each Woo! one of you in this room. <laughs> Because, awesome. like Kimmy said, the love that you gave as soon as we walked in was not fake. Mm. Um, we can walk into these rooms and have somebody go, hi, how you going? <laughs> and we'd be going like, yeah, whatever. Um, but when we walked in and we found the love from each one of you, not just the welcoming team, yeah, right. it made us feel part of it. That's so beautiful. That's why, that's why I then jumped on board. Awesome. But that's also every single week. Yeah, ah, that, yeah that definitely. There you go. Just yeah. stop. It's not a, a one-off thing. Yeah, I agree with that. So That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so then you've walked in the church, you felt love, you felt warmth, you felt welcomed. Why did you then go to a connect group? And how long was it from walking in the door to actually attending Pastor Dom and Cooler's connect group? What was it that made you go there? For me, it was simple. Kimmy said, we're going to a connect group. <laughs> Good husband. Good husband. I went, okay. <laughs> um, it, it, I think from memory, it was just a week. Wow. Um, you came to church and a week later went to connect group. Oh, no, we spoke about it because yeah. we started yeah. in December. And then as soon as it started up in, yeah. I think, in February, yep. we, the first week, we okay, were I was so wrong about the one week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So what has been your Connect Group experience? What have you gotten from attending? How long has it been now? A year? Is that the beginning of this year or last this this year? year. So what has been your experience in these months? Extended family, learning, mentors, praying. Yeah. If you, even if you have a bad week, they generally know about it because they can tell. Yeah. Well, they become your family, yeah. don't they? Yeah. That's amazing. That's beautiful, actually. Even George? The, sorry. Sorry, the weekends, we're going out with our family from Connect Group and yeah, well, just learning It's so interesting much. you say that because this came out of a conversation you and I had and Kim said to me, I now can ring up anyone in my Connect Group any night of the week and go for dinner. And that was really, that spoke volumes to me of the people in this church. Because I thought, isn't that amazing? And then I thought, let's put a panel together. Let's share that with the rest of the church. Because there might be people sitting here that are not experiencing what Kim and George have experienced. And you're missing out. You're actually missing out. So for you, George, what's been your experience? Uh, To me, like I've actually said in... um auditorium and I've gone, what, you're saying there are people that are not going to connect group. Are you serious? <laughs> hey, like, it's, I just love going there. Wow. Um, I get to find out a lot because I ask a lot of questions and Pastor Dom rolls his eyes at me, yeah. but we won't go there. <laughs> but you know what? That's what connect group is about. It's about your opportunity to ask questions because you can't do it in this forum, can no, you? No, I mean, like, we stand here, <laughs> we listen to uh, the, the message and and we go home, and then we face a week, and then we go, okay, and we come back. But by having the, the, the connect, we refresh the battery. Wow, um, that's Recharge great. it and, and uh, keep the following Christ and the wow. faith. The one biggest thing is that, like I said, we can ask questions, and those questions get answered, but then also you actually face it in life. I mean, I remember saying to Pastor Dom a couple of weeks ago, I finally got the question, 
and, so, and we talked about it at Connect Group, and the question was, are you a Bible basher? Oh, and I went, interesting. I don't know how to answer that. And I said, have I ever pushed Christ onto you? And I said, no. And to me, it was the, the fact that I had the confidence of answering it and the confidence of telling somebody that I do follow Christ and they wow. have no fear of it. Um, yeah. because I went to the connect groups to get myself charged up. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> <coughs> so, sorry, can I just say yeah, one more thing? Sorry, we, yeah. Our main day is going to church on a Sunday, but our next main day of the week is our connect group. Wow. And what you look forward yeah, to. Yeah, that's what we that's do. Awesome. And especially I suffer mental health. So to get to go on Sunday, then I really do get recharged yeah. on the Tuesday night. That's awesome. And it's actually awesome. huge for Kimmy to be sitting up here and actually talking because yes, she's not comfortable. So. Actually, we do, you know what? We actually do need to say that because this is really Kim out of her comfort zone, but from the, the building up of her connect group, like she said, the prayers, I've had a bad week, I don't have to say anything. I walk into my connect group and they know and they pray for me. You know, this is a changed couple through the power of connection. So just amazing. So on that, what would you say to people not attending a connect group? Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. Go straight after the service and join up. Oh, come on. <laughs> it is that important. It will change wow, your life. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're missing out basically that's because cool. like everyone wants to love you. Um, like Pastor Trish said before, the connect, the connect groups um, give you the one thing that we're all looking for, love. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we love Christ and he loves us. Wow. Um, but when we go to that room, we also, everybody in that room loves you. I mean, uh, when we first started, the, the group was mainly ladies. So it was a little bit Ooh. weird for me in the first place. I was uncomfortable <laughs> going. <laughs> but uh, now we have Anthony, uh, we have David um, and... It, it's growing all the time. Awesome. Uh, Marcus has also That's joined. Awesome. So it's not too late to join. Um, <laughs> just jump on board. If not, why not? Awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. So my last question to you both is, would you one day down the track consider running a connect group? <laughs> Come it. on. Not, not, not tomorrow. Look, not even next year. Just we, one day. We've already had the experience of running a connect group. Oh. Um, uh, Pastor Dom and Pastor Kula were away uh, at, uh, in the Philippines yep. and um, we got together with Ron and David and said, listen, we don't really want to miss out, so why don't we just have one at our wow. place? Wow, so, I love that. So we I loved love it love and we do it again. So. And how easy was it? Opened your home, yeah. sat on the couch and had a chat, yeah? yeah? It was That's fantastic. pretty much it. Yeah. That's awesome. And That's we did the uh, thing of putting on the food also, so we, we still know how to do it. <laughs> I love that. It's just our signature, isn't it? Where there's Centre Point Church people, there's food. No, that's amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being real and vulnerable and sharing your experience with us. Thank you. You know, in Acts chapter 2, you know, we just sang a song that talks about writing our story. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, is the beginning of our story. And I'd like to read it to you. It's where the Christian church began. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourself from the crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. And this next verse is actually has a title above it in my Bible. And it says, the believers form a community. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, which is communion, and to prayer. Now, about those scriptures, the commentary actually says, these new Christians were united with other believers, taught by the apostles and included in prayer and fellowship. New believers in Christ need to be in groups. This is the commentary. This is not me, guys. Where they can learn God's word, pray and mature in their faith. If you have just begun a relationship with Christ, seek out other believers for fellowship, pray, prayer and teaching. This is the way to grow. Now, this year, our theme has been grow, hasn't it? Would you two say that you have grown from going to Connect Group? Spiritually, in, even just in your marriage, in your family life? A hundred percent. I mean, um, we've come from a, um, 
a past that's uh, been hard road and everything else, um, I find myself a lot calmer. Mm. I don't argue oh, okay. as much with Kim. Wow. Um, I don't have road rage as much as you say either. <laughs> well, I'm thankful for that. Uh, and I'm on the road eight I'm hours a day and uh, road I road. now can just go, wow. it's all good. That's awesome. So. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. That passage of scripture goes on to say, a deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. Who here wants to start seeing signs and wonders again? I do. I want to start seeing signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowships those who were being saved. This is the formula that the early church used to get to where we are today. It's foolproof. It works. We were created to be in homes with other people, getting together, sharing a meal and doing life. That is what Connect Group is. So, Michael, I'm going to throw it over to you. Similar question. I was wondering what Michael was doing up here. <laughs> <laughs> now, we Me were going to have his beautiful wife, Marie, with us, but unfortunately she woke up um, not feeling just a little bit ill this morning. So we pray for Marie that she will be healed by the time you go home in Jesus' name. So, Thank Michael, you. what was your first impression of church? Because yours was a little bit funny. Uh, my, my impression of... Well, let's put it this way. The first time I walked into church, uh, the 4D, when we had it at uh, yeah. the Hub, yes. was the very first service from memory. And... I was on at, uh, at, that started at four o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and at 20 to four, I was on the Balti Bridge with four other bikers, motorbike riders, and I stopped, and I told them that I had to go to church. Wow. And they were, they ridiculed me to no end. I came back by myself, um, sat in a particular chair, <laughs> and what I was impressed with was the band. Wow. Because I didn't know anybody other than Pastor John and the band, because they had a full band. And being half a musician, I, um, I was impressed. And at the end of the service, um, it just I got convicted there and then. That's awesome. So this is where I need to be. Wow. This is where you belong. Wow. And um, although I struggled so much to get there that day, I was really... And so the impression at that point was the band was what drew me in, the music That's drew me awesome. in. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So and these guys, it was the welcome... And for you, it was the music. The irony of that is that six weeks later, I was on the band. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but did you say that this is my chair and I'm going to do nothing but sit in this chair and watch? Yeah, that yeah. was... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> and if I can be screwed a little bit, it's like a dog <laughs> when he marks his territory. So I wanted that chair. This is where I'm going to sit every week and this is where I'm going to receive from. That's awesome. But I had no idea as to... Yeah what the outcome was going to be. This, it just blew me away. That's beautiful. So how did you go from attending church to attending a connect group? What was the time frame? These guys, it was, they just waited for them to open and bang, they were there. I don't, uh, to be honest with you, I don't remember. Okay. But it wasn't long because Marie was not on board um, coming to church. Yeah. So the six weeks later, during that six-week period, I said from sitting down to going onto the band... I asked Marie to come to support me in the band because she was the only person yeah. I knew other than John. So I needed some moral support. And she said no. She went to her mother's. <laughs> and um, when, uh, when she got to her mother's, her mother said to her, where's your husband? Oh, he's gone. He's gone playing on some, in some band with some church, you know. And she convicted her. Wow. She said, you... Go to your husband. He needs your support. Make sure you go now. This is your mother-in-law. This is my mother. My mother-in-law is wow. a, woman, a, a phenomenal woman. She's a beautiful lady. And um, she said, you need to be with your husband. That's beautiful. And she, next thing you know, she rolled up. And I'm playing away there. And she rolls up. And I go, wow. My wife. Well, must here. have had the same conviction I did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That's just the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy yeah, Spirit working through definitely. your mother-in-law 
to talk to Marie and convict her and then to come and support And you. she's That's a devout beautiful. Catholic, I might add, yeah, but she's yeah. very supportive as to what we do. Yeah. And, how, and she is actually, by the way we live and speak and introduce biblical principles without yeah. her even knowing about it, she can see growth in us, wow. in my children. Uh, in in uh, in just the way we live, yeah. she she's she's really good. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, whose connect group did you initially go to? I went to Dom and Coolers too. Oh. The common thing there, <laughs> isn't it? The place to be. We're going to have to get you a bigger home. Yeah. No, so you went to Dom and Coolers. Yeah. Well, so then what was the transition from? Did Marie come with you to Dom and yes. Coolers? So then, what was the transition to then? Because now you run your own connect group. Yes. So, what what was the conviction? What happened? Well, I was um, I was um, I was impressed with the knowledge that Dom had at mm-hmm. the time and how he spoke because mm-hmm. he can keep going and he can keep going <laughs> and he keeps going in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> and I mean that I'll with the utmost respect. <laughs> uh, but uh, tragically, uh, not long after that, um, Cooler's dad passed away. Mm. And that sort of like left left us in a little bit of a, um, uh, when I say it's not limbo as in they abandoned us, it was limbo as to being fed. Yeah. And I did not want to wow. stop being fed because yeah. I was on a roll yeah. and I just wanted the momentum to maintain that wow. momentum. So um, I took, I bit the bullet like you did, right? Yeah. And said, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's have a go. So you then took over their connect group? Yeah, wow. for, a, for a little while. And then wow. we went back to, we started going back to Dom and Coolers again. Yeah. And um, while we were there, uh, I said to Maria, I said, you know, we can do this. Yeah. You know? Isn't she goes, you, 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 you don't have the knowledge, you don't have this, you don't have that. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I'll learn. You know? Good she goes, okay, you. well, we'll see what happens. And... That's we did. amazing. That's awesome. We I, remember, out. I remember being at your home, <coughs> sitting across the table from you. <coughs> you had invited someone over for John to talk to them about Jesus, and I was watching your face as he was sharing the Lord with them. And after they left, you, you looked across the table and you said to me, I don't know if you remember, you said, I want to do that. Yeah, that was my niece. I remember that. Yeah, you said, I want to do that. And I remember saying, You will. And look yeah, at this. Yeah, you were you right. Are. You actually are. So isn't that amazing? You you open yourself up, you open your home, yes, but you make yourself available. The power of the Holy Spirit convicts you, you see a need and you just continue to take people on the journey. That's beautiful. So you're obviously an advocate of connect groups because now you run all our connect groups. Just give us a little insight into that. Just in the running of it. This term I cheated. I used John's nuts. Oh. <laughs> I have to and have I do it. know that because I text Michael and said, awesome connect group. Because I didn't write it. <laughs> but I've added, very to it. I've added to it with the study notes <laughs> and stuff that I had anyway. Um, um, with, with running one. You're running all of them. Uh, with all of them, yes. That's something that I think um, um, is a, a privilege. Um, it's it's an honourable thing to be to be able to uh, sit down. I, I keep Monday mornings free for that yeah. reason. Um, the, the the amount of stuff that I've learnt as a result of it in the last wow. twelve months is uh, it just takes you to another level. Wow. The unfortunate thing is that you cannot give everything that you've picked up on because you you will be there from for a week. And you'll have a book this big yeah. to, to work with. But yeah. in saying that, um, uh, you see, you just we're in a we're in a period of growth, yeah. and that 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 part of ministry that I've been able to to do it has grown me as an individual wow. to no end. Wow! And uh, it's awesome. just taken me to another level. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. So just earlier on, I read from that um, commentary description about the new believers in Christ need to be in a group where they can learn God's word. And if you've just begun a relationship with Christ, seek out other believers um, for you to be able to grow. So what would you say this morning to new believers who aren't in a connect group? We are in a very difficult and up-and-coming time of uh, where the world is going. Yeah. And we need to get ourselves prepared. If you, ha- if you listen to what Rob 
and John and some of the preachers that have been up here talking about your faith has to be um, reconfigured for to be able to stand in determination of what yeah. we do. Yeah. Your faith, I don't know if you know this, but your faith is a gift. Yeah. Okay, and you need to... You, and God will look at you and say, when the time comes, what are you going to do with that faith? Wow. And if you don't use that faith in accordance with his will, wow. all right, you're going you're gonna to know about it. Now, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be positive because you, we, we're still sitting here being able to discuss it. Yeah. I was talking to someone about this before. So your determination and your, your ste- steadfast as to being able to stand up and... Um, learn where we're at in the season that we're at, how detrimental that is, um, you need to get to a connect group. Yeah. You will learn this in the connect group. Yeah. The people that run connect groups, um, they, they, they've got the paperwork and everything to, to feed you as to what you need. But you need to get your faith built up. Yeah, that's good. We're, we're in really tricky times at the moment and you don't want to be deceived. So deception is the Satan's biggest tool. Because you'll make you believe one thing to another. And then if you're in the word and if you're, if you're feeding your faith, okay, mm. Connect Group's the place to do it. Awesome. Awesome. So that's for the new believer. Amen. Yes. So my last question is, do we ever stop growing? What would you say to a seasoned person or someone who's been in church for a long time and is not attending a Connect Group? What would you say? Nicely. Nicely. Be nice, Michael. Marie, Marie, um, Marie has got a really... She said to me, she goes, have you invited such and such to tonight? Have you invited such and such? Every week it's something, someone new or, or something like that. And um, I say to Marie this. I say to her, some come, some don't, but um, not everyone understands or loves God like we do. Yeah. And those that don't, okay, eventually they'll get the message. But we keep inviting people, yeah. and that's what your job is. For them to attend is their, their business. Sorry, can you ask yeah. me the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to someone who has been attending church for some time, but not attending a connect group? Yeah, well, okay. If, you've been, if, you, if you're here for the Sunday service, great. Yeah, All right? If that's, that's right. where it stops, yeah. that's something you've got to look at. Yeah, that's good. You, you need to... It doesn't, it doesn't stop at... Uh, you know, 11.30 today. Yeah. It, you, you move on. You yeah. keep going. Yeah. Christianity is an ongoing thing. It's, it's discipleship. Yeah, that's good. It's fellowship. That's good. It's worship. Yeah. It's uh, all the ships you can get, <laughs> you know. Um, it's, it's, if you're not in a connect group, you're stunting your growth. Wow. If water doesn't run, it builds algae. Wow. So nothing gets in it. Nobody wants to go in it. But if the water's r- moving... Okay, you want to be part of that movement. Yeah. We are really, really in, really, really in delicate times. Yeah, we And we need to are. stand, build your strength in your faith. Amen. Build it. Amen. Because people will see it. Whether you do or not, it's not, not, it's, not it's, it's important, but others have to see it. Yeah. Let, you want to be to the point where they ask you, what is it? Wow. What drug are you on? It's called yeah. Jesus Christ. Awesome, amazing. Before we close this morning, George, you have something you wanted to add? I just wanted to ask, like you were saying about um, if you come to church all the time, um, well, I believe that what we're trying to do is grow. Mm. And unless you're dead, mm. you're still growing. Right? So not only that, you're depriving the person sitting next to you or the person wow. that's sitting at the uh, Connect Night learning from you in the first place. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's a little bit shallow, great. isn't it? So, that's great. Um, as a newbie, I want to learn from you, you, wow. you. Wow. And unless you teach me, I can't learn. So wow. if you don't come, that's I can't amazing. learn. There you go. There you go. Do you know, my, mine and John's experience was actually connect group before church. We weren't going to church for, I think, a whole year. We were just at Pastor Rob's connect group, maybe even a little bit longer because uh, John's soccer didn't allow us to make it to the service because it was all the way on the other side of town. So we survived. Our longevity came from being in a connect group during the week because we, had, we couldn't go to church on a Sunday. 
So that is what held our faith and, and grew us. That's exactly was our experience. So guys, I want to thank you for joining us. Give them another round of applause. Haven't they been amazing? Thank you. I now, now know how Bambi feels sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us. That's amazing. Look, before we close, I really wanted to invite my husband up to just come and speak into what it looks like to run a connect group. Do you know, my first connect group that I ran, I had a one year, no, not even, I think I had a six-month-old baby and I put myself out there like Kim. It was not my forum to be a public speaker. Definitely was not my forum. And I was challenged to run a connect group during the day for ladies. And I thought, I can do this. It's, it's, I was a bit, you know, nervous, but I thought, I can do this. The morning of my connect group, I did my study because that's what I do and I got read up and I made my notes. My senior pastor called me and he said, Trish, you wouldn't mind if I came to your connect group this morning. Um, I, didn't, I wasn't at church on Sunday because I was away, had been in Vanuatu. I uh, didn't get communion. I'd really come and like to join you ladies for connect group. Wow, did my heart stop? I, my throat was dry, I was parched, I was dying. And then it was like the Holy Spirit just slapped me and said, get it together, girl. He's just a person. He's just a person. And you know what? He didn't even come. He got called into a meeting and he didn't come. And all that sweat and all that pressure was for, for no reason. Thank you. But you know what? It was for me to show me that, yes, Trish Checker, you can run a connect group. So... I just wanted to, um, yeah, get John to talk into who can run a connect group and what does a connect group look like for Centrepoint Church. Thank you, you Trish. Want me to go or can no, I you're stay? amazing. You oh, can stay. Thank you. I think we should do church like this all the time. <laughs> who says you've got to stand up and yeah, have a pulpit and right, all that? That's right. That's what tradition tells you. <laughs> but we've got to follow what the Word of God tells awesome. us. Awesome. And uh, I thank you this morning for those that uh, sat up here. Amazing. I was so blessed, uh, George and Kim and Michael, just uh, hearing the rawness and the reality of walking with Jesus. And that's what it's about. We're here to walk with Jesus. We're here to uh, live for Jesus. And uh, again, when Trish mentioned what she wanted to do, I felt like, you know, this is where we've really got to make a statement. And the reality of and the simplicity of, of Christianity we've made it so hard haven't we I I think we have I think the church when I say the church I think the the organization has made it so difficult and if I can use the term probably so elite for us to do this life but the reality is simple you know Jesus walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem man he rocked up at people's houses he sat on a rock he just started doing life with people and had relationships and through relationships people entered the kingdom i think it's awesome you know the disciples as trish mentioned went up to an upper room and they didn't know what they were really waiting for but they all they did was obey jesus christ Mm. and in that obedience you know we have the church today but yet again the church wraps itself in organization we we've got to tell uh uh you know people how to do church and the reality is is that you know what this is just a gathering on a sunday it's, it's housing the church in a place where we can come and celebrate and we can worship Him. But in reality, church is, is really during the week. Yeah. It's, it's from house to house as we heard. Interesting what happened is that when we read up there, I don't know if you noticed, but when the Holy Spirit uh, spoke through Peter and there was such a conviction on people that were hungry and thirsty after God, they said, what must we do? And he said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin and you shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Interesting, when the Holy Spirit came on them, they, Peter and the apostles, did not tell them how to do church. Interesting, read what it says. And they went from house to house. How did Peter... And the 12 apostles spread themselves over all of those homes. No, they, the people, yeah, very good went point. from house that's to an house. Awesome point. And that's what we've got to get in our spirits and our hearts, church. Yeah. We, not the pastor, we, I, John, as the church, need to go from house to house, cafe to cafe. Yeah. This is one. Connect Group. Yeah. It's not about necessarily your house. You might say, well, my house is not big enough. Whoa, I'm going to read you something right here and right now. This is in. Oh, a Bible, yes. 
I'm sorry, I don't usually use one of these. But uh, I do read them, but I don't use this rice paper. Love the smell of rice paper. That's my Bible. That's mine. That's right, I don't have one. A pastor not having a Bible. Sorry. Did you come to the right church, Salsa? <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. Well, this is what it says in Matthew. The words of Jesus, red letter words. He says this. This is in uh, chapter 18. And this is where he's talking about how to actually do life. How to deal with people in general. And he's talking about um, uh, dealing with a brother. And he says this in verse 18 of chapter 18. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, you ask, it will be done by my Father in heaven. And here's, here's the beauty of it. Verse 20, For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. Wow. Come on. That's where awesome. two or three. Yeah. We're not here to have 10 people in a connect That's group, right. 15 or 20. That's in right. fact, I want to discourage that <laughs> because there's too much gold in one connect group. There's other people there that need to be invited. There's other people there that you can touch. Mm. Two or three. He's in the midst of two or three. Awesome. And in the Philippines, uh, getting into people's homes is, is a bit of an issue. Right. So what we've instigated there is they love coffee. They love Starbucks and all that kind of stuff. And, <laughs> you know, so we've, we've instigated connect groups in, in, in coffee shops. How cool is that? And where two or three are gathered. In fact, you know, with the amazing growth of this church and people taking on more responsibility... Uh, we've been able to put together a one-to-one, -one, which is basically an eight-week uh, course, or I call it training, where you and me, any one of us, can actually speak to someone and take them through to Jesus Christ, to being a disciple, to being a follower of Jesus. And I feel like for next year, that's, that's our goal. Our goal, because of what's happening around the world. You know, we need to be binding what's happening mm. in this earth, eh? Yeah. Not whining. We need to be binding. Wow. Come on, we need to be agreeing where two or three agree. If we uh, agree in the name of Jesus, if we meet in the name of Jesus, because as Pastor Rob was saying in his prophecy, it's Jesus who does the work. But he's got to be in you and I. We've got to agree in him, agree in his word, get around his word. And for you and I in this church and the pastoral team have, have, have set up connect groups because that's the vitality of your life. See, if you want counseling, you'll get it in a connect group. If you want prayer, you're going to get it in a connect group. Yeah. If you want communion every week, yeah. you're going to get it in a connect group. These wow. guys had communion not in a building. They had it in house to house. Yeah. So what are we doing? We get our teaching there. We get our prayer life there. We get our connection, our relationship, our communion. We, we, break, bread, we break bread. We get our teaching. That's where it happens. Yeah. And when these guys were kindly saying, you're missing out, you're missing out. Yeah. You really are because there's, there's what God has deposited in your life. We need to hear. We need to receive. It's in that fellowship. It's in that binding together that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, says, uh, cleanses us from all sin. It's in that space. In fact, I feel like what we're looking for and what some people are missing out because what they're looking for they're not getting is found in a connect group. Yeah, I agree. 100%. In fact, I'm going to go as far as saying this. Is it's more important to get to a connect group than to get on a Sunday. There you go. It is. Now, I want to be on a Sunday because I want to see you all. But connect group is where you sit, where you speak, where you receive, where you're prayed for, where if you're mm. missing, someone's looking out for you. Yeah, you'll be known. You know, someone says, oh, the church doesn't even care and bother about me. Yeah, we do, but like Jesus, he says, there's parameters in which my love remains. If you want my love, here I am, I'm here for you. The prodigal son. People say, well, why didn't that father go after the prodigal? Well, the reality is, is that he was after him every day looking for his return. But he said, if you want to be safe, there's a place to be safe. If you want my care, there's a place to be cared for. And you know what? Connect groups are a little bit like that. Mm. We care for you, but it's in, found in connect group. You know, as if something is happening in a connect group, uh, it, it goes through to Michael, and Michael sends it through to the pastoral team. Right. Man, we're praying on it. We're on it. 
uh, that's how we can keep in reach. We can't keep reach of every uh, what's happening in, in all of our churches that's if it was right. just the pastoral team. It's impossible. That's reality. The reality is, is there's Melton, there's, the, there's two churches in the Philippines. We could never do that. But what is reality is we understand that connection is powerful. And I love what Trish shared in relation to uh, what the world says about that. And yes, it's true. They find that through the Bible and the Word of God. So, you know what, I just want to encourage you that you can open up your home. You can sit with someone weekly. You can get two or three people together. My wife meets with girls in Melton. Now we're going to start doing it here. So it, you can do that. You can organize that. It, you don't have to be a scholar. No, right. our, our, our connect groups aren't about delving into the deep <laughs> things of God. You can, yes, you, you, you're not going to you're not going to get that there. You're going to you're going to get certainly get to ask some questions, and we understand that. So next year, just to make you aware, we want to meet those needs too. Yeah. We want people that want to study the Word of God. Uh, we, we've got a 21 week practical uh, theolo- theological um, a program that will be happening here. So if you're hungry for the Word of God, you want to de- uh, dive deep, you can. If you want to go deeper and get a certificate, you can. We've got our, our CMC connected to our CPC. There's an acronym, acronyms, mouthful. So we've got that as well. Yeah. You know what? If you want to be mentored or you want to know what leadership and discipleship's about, we've got an 18-week course that I'm doing next year. So we're doing those things. But you know what? They are all time-consuming. It means you've got to make time. And if you've been listening over the last probably three months, you would have been hearing there's been a shift in what we've been speaking about. Because let me tell you, Jesus is coming back. And you know what? We're not going to sit up here or stand up here and give you some great information. We're going to give you good news. And that good news sometimes hurts you. (laughs) That good news sometimes is painful. I was interested to hear from some of the people who went to the, the Babylon um, lecture by Martin Isles from ACL the other night. There was over 4,000 people that attended, Victorians. And I couldn't help but sense the same spirit there that was in the time when Jesus was walking through Jerusalem and coming into his triumphant entry. I really felt there were people there saying, oh, Martin Isles, he's going to give us the answer to overthrow the government. That's the spirit I was hearing. And in some of the questions that I had privy to see as well, that was kind of how can we change this government? As you've been hearing from my preaching, Jesus wasn't interested. And I love what Martin Isles said in his Q&A. And he's a politician. Well, he's a Joseph as far as I'm concerned. I feel like he's the spirit of Joseph's on this guy. But I love what he said. As much as he's involved in politics and wanting to see things happen in this country of Australia, this is what he said. Because the question was, how can we, how can we change this country? The first thing he says is one by one. And go back to Matthew 28. Make disciples love on people. Love on people one by one and make disciples. That's the first and foremost what we need to do, is love people. Love on them, lead them, bring them to Christ. That's how you make a change. I love that he didn't say, we've got to overthrow the government. Because I believe, he believes what I believe. Prophecy tells us that that's not going to happen until mm. Jesus comes. So don't spend your energy in that. The other thing he did say is if you do want to make a change slowly, he did say this, it's a slow change. He's been doing this for five years and he's seen a minimal shift in the way votes are going and the way he can influence through government. He says if you do want to do that, well then get on board with someone like ACL. So I'm here not to say not to. But I'm not, in, I'm not necessarily uh, for, you know, holding up banners and things like that. If you are, God bless you. Yeah. I, I want to go about the first way and because that's what God's called me. Yeah. And that's, that's what right. I believe God's called this church to, to be salt and light. And, you know, our pastors and evangelists here, 
they're about helping you do that. And if you feel like you've got friends and family that you're not bold enough to speak to, I mean, we've got a guy here, the best one-on-one evangelist I know, Robert Amass. He's one of the best one-on-one evangelists I know. And you know what? The guys, mate, you're looking pretty young today, mate. Looking pretty young, sharp, mate. Very sharp. They're getting up here, mate. I said, hey, this guy's like uh, Benjamin Button. You're getting, you're getting younger, mate. You're backwards. Come on. <laughs> but, you know, he loves Jesus. That's why yeah, he's probably so young. God wants to right. keep him here as long as he can. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, back in the day, I mean, Trisha and I, we, we didn't go to church for 12 months. But we went along to Robert's parents home in yeah. fact Robert I Robert never ran those meetings he invited he people to those meetings right. his mum and dad opened that house they did not speak one word about this wow. they lived every word of this right. they opened their home people would come there for Mrs. Hermes's chicken lasagna they would come there for that? Mr. Hermes's scotch <laughs> Given out cigarettes at a connect group. Oh my gosh. I loved it. That's what got me there. It doesn't say in the Bible that you can't do that, does it? It was the relationship. Who would give me cigarettes and scotch, mate? I'd have to pay for that at, at Bombay. But he would invite us and make us welcome. Why? Because he wanted us to stay long enough so that we could hear the Word of God. So that we could be loved by God. And that's where we get love, guys. That's what it was about. Loving one another. Not here on a Sunday. It's a celebration. And we need to be celebrating here on a Sunday. Inviting people, yes, here, but so that we can love on them, take them out on a Sunday, get to know them, but doing life Monday to, to... to Saturday. You know, Trisha and I, we, we just wanted to, once we saw the value, like Michael was saying, a lot of people don't see the value, but once we saw the value, we wanted to be in people's lives, like George and Kim. We wanted mm, to learn. That's right. If there was a marriage seminar on, dude, we were there. We dropped everything. If there was a, a, a study night on, back then we were paying $5 $5 on a Wednesday to go and listen to the Word. Some of you will say, that's robbery. <laughs> no, that's called sowing. That's called value. That's called keeping the lights on. That's called keeping hiring a place so we can fit 50 people. Yeah. And I feel like, you know what, if you want to change, be the change. Yeah. And another thing Martin Isle said is that we've got to get back into the reality of life. And some of us have lost that reality. And you get back and brought down to reality in a connect group, trust me, when you hear what's going on in people's lives. When you're open enough to share your own life. That's where the grassroots happen. Not on all lights and show and, you know, it's great. I, I, I love this building, don't get me wrong. And God's given it to us to the glory of God. And next year you're going to see even more reasons why God's given us such a building. And we'll share about the vision of that. But the reality is, is that the one-on-one, the, the two, the three are gathered. That's where Jesus is. He says, that's where my presence is. So I want to challenge you yeah. as we come to a close of 2022. And you know what? You, you feel like you're growing. Great. Let's give some of that to someone else. Yeah. Who's someone else? Who, who's your list of people that you know, that you've been praying for? Let me, let me ask you to go one step further. Mm. Not only pray for them, invite them. And they might not come to church. We didn't go to church for 12 months because we thought, you know what, they just want to take our money. You might have that. that Where Robert Hermes's parents' house, they just gave us their money through their cigarettes and whiskey and food. Someone's got to give. Someone's got to pay. And until you understand the value of giving, then you won't understand what it means for Jesus died on the cross. Mm. Someone had to pay the price. Yeah. And our price is not dying. Our price is our time, our talent, our treasure. Yeah. And maybe God's speaking to you about opening your home. Maybe God's speaking to you about, you know what, who's my list? Who's, who are the people that actually I can invite? Mm. I may be like Philip, who ran after the, the, the big, uh, big wig who came to hear the gospel at a church service And when the the apostles preached, he got nothing from it, didn't understand it. But then Philip 
raced and followed him in the chariot and got him to come and listen. Maybe you're just one of those people. And I don't just say just, but I mean maybe you're one of those people that are a great gatherer and a collector of people. Call someone else. Doesn't matter. Some people sow, some people water, some people reap. Guess what? We all get the same wages. We all get the same rewards. When When one person comes in the kingdom, we all rejoice with our Heavenly Father. Can we just stand up this morning? Probably gone a little bit too long. You know, we sang a song, I believe in the power of God. I believe in His goodness. And it's His goodness in us. We can't do this on our own. And you know, this year we made room in this church because we started in Melton. So there's room here. There's plenty of room as you can see. And as I often say, if it fills up, let's let's start another service. It's fine. But I I want us to focus a little bit Uh, or bring our focus a little bit differently and just close your eyes for a moment and as we've been talking this way Mm. and I know that many of you are already making impact and inroads with people that's that's amazing I want to honor you for that but can I just challenge some of us that you know there might be a desire in you and say, yeah, you know what, I, I, want, I want to open my home, but I'm just frightened. Or, you know what, I, I want to invite someone for a coffee, but I just don't know what to say. Mm. Can I ask you to make that step of invitation? Do you know what the Bible promises us? That at that particular moment, God's going to give us the words to say. But there's nothing better or there's no better way of starting a conversation saying, hey, I just invited you out because I don't get time to spend with you and I just want to know how you're going. Do you know that is actually an amazing question that a lot of people don't ask each other? I met someone at a wedding that I did here recently and just connected with him and I actually said, I'm going to call you and I want to get together with you. And the Lord reminded me, hey, keep your word, John. So I called him this week and I said to him, hey, by his name I just want to catch up and have a coffee he said mate I've been hanging for you to call me I wonder how many other people are hanging for me to call them I wonder how many other people are hanging for you to just call them and say hey let's have a coffee because we're genuinely concerned we're genuinely wanting to see how they are we're genuinely wanting to bring them into a relationship with Jesus and if they're not a Christian so this morning father all over this house If that's you, and again, whether it's confidence, whether it's resource, whether it's, Lord, give me a desire, whatever it might be, because I can't give you that desire. I can help you resource. I can pray with you. uh, We can support you. But whatever that is today, will you just make a declaration to God as we stand in His presence? You know what that is. Just, Just raise your hand to Him. And say, Lord, this is this is me. And Lord, I, I want I want I need confidence. I want boldness, uh, courage. Lord, I, I want opportunity. Maybe you need time. Maybe you're time poor. Whatever it is, just raise your hand. And you know what? God will meet that because you're asking. Father God, every hand that's raised here this morning, whatever that need is, whatever, Lord, you've been speaking to them, Holy Spirit, Lord, this church loves you so much and I know that you love it so much as well you died for it but Lord we're desperate we want people to come to Jesus and Lord today we want you to make a way for us whether it is time whether it is uh, Father resource whether it is confidence Lord whether it is Lord challenges as we heard this morning here up on this couch Lord you love it when we become public about you you said if we lift Jesus up you will draw all men to yourself. And Lord, may we be a church of lifting Jesus up. May we be a church of loving one another. You said if we love one another, this is how all men will know that we're your disciples. Lord, it's, it's not difficult. And Lord, I, Lord, rebuke any spirit of religion in this house. Lord, we ask you to cast it out. Lord, things that have made it difficult to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, 
But Lord, I ask that Holy Spirit, you might come and you might refresh and bring revival. Lord, there is so many people that have deposit, God deposit in their life that has been closed up. Lord, I ask for revival. I speak revival. Holy Spirit, bring revival in the yeah. hearts of this church. Amen. Amen. Loosen. Lord, you said if two or three agree, Lord, whatever we loosen, Lord, will be loosed in heaven. And I loosen the shackles, Father God, of the conservative Christianity. I loosen the shackles, Father God, of insecurities in their, in their faith. I loosen, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, anybody's so-called incompetence. Because with you, God, you are the competent one. We put our faith in you. Lord, may this church be a church of invitation. May it be a one that, Lord, embraces. And I thank you for the testimony of this. I just want to take a moment out of this prayer. Um, I was so blessed this week. I went out with a couple. Trish and I went out with a couple. And again, like the testimony yeah. we had. And we just, you know, we just wanted to get to know these, these guys. And they said, you know what? We walked in your church. We were going to a church for 15 years. Fa fairly large and prominent church. If I gave you the name, you'd know that. But we walked in your church and everyone was so loving. And can I just say this church? We're a loving church. And I thank you for that. You need to give yourselves a yeah. hand. Really to the glory of God. This is a loving church.